Hello, and welcome to Wesley United Methodist Church of Trenton, Missouri. Our church is located at 113 East 9th Street, which is on the corner of 9th and Washington in Trenton, Missouri. You can call our office between the hours of 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, Monday through Friday at 660-359-6762, or visit our website at wesleyunitedmethodist.us. Now we invite you to open your heart, mind, and body to the Word of God with Reverend Barry Bulware. We go all the way back to the Old Testament now, the book of Amos. The prophet Amos is speaking the words straight from God. Woe to you who long for the day of the Lord. Why do you long for the day of the Lord? That day will be darkness, not light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion only to meet a bear. As though he entered his house and rested his hand on the wall only to have a snake bite him. Will not the day of the Lord be darkness, not light? Pitch dark without a ray of brightness? I hate, I despise your religious feast. I cannot stand your assemblies. Even though you bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Though you bring choice fellowship offerings, I will have no regard for them. Away with the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the music of your harps, but let just, justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing stream. May God bless this reading of his holy word. I have wanted to preach this sermon for the last 20 years, even though it never got written down until this week. Without appearing to promote my own stuff, let me just honestly say that the content of today's message is always timely. Perhaps more people are exploited and abused in the cause of religion than in any other way. Sex, money, and power all take a back seat to religion as a possible source of evil. Religion can easily become the most dangerous energy source known to humankind. The moment a person or a government or a religion or an organization is convinced that God is either ordering or sanctioning a cause, from that moment on, anything goes. The history worldwide of religion-fueled hatred, killing, and oppression is staggering. The biblical prophets are on the front line of those doing something about it. The biblical prophets continue to be the most powerful voice and effective voice ever heard on earth for keeping religion honest, humble, and compassionate. Prophets sniff out injustice, especially injustice that is all dressed up in religious garb. They sniff it out a mile away. Prophets are not impressed by position or power or authority. They aren't taken in by numbers, size, or appearance of success. They pay little attention to what men and women say about God. Prophets listen to God and rigorously test all human language and action against what they hear. Among these prophets, Amos towers as a defender of the downtrodden poor and the powerful who hold no concern for their acts of injustice. It just might be that none of us can be trusted in this business. If we pray and worship God and associate with others who likewise pray and worship God, we absolutely must keep company with these biblical prophets. We are required to submit all of our words and acts to their passionate scrutiny to prevent 
the perversion of our religion becoming something self-serving. A spiritual life that doesn't give a large place to the prophet articulated justice will end up making us worse instead of better. Separating us from God's ways instead of drawing us to them. With these thoughts in mind, the prophet speaks. Addressing all the people, including the king of Israel, the prophet Amos speaks the words given by God. And now I'm reading from the Peterson translation. Amos stands and says, I can't stand your religious meetings. I'm fed up with your conferences and conventions. I want nothing to do with your religious projects, your pretentious slogans and goals. I'm sick of your public relations and image making. I've had all I can take of your noisy ego music. When was the last time you sang to me? God says, Through the prophet. And then Amos turns his attention from what Israel has been doing to what God now wants. The prophet says, do you know what I want? I want justice. Oceans of it. I want fairness. Rivers of it. That's what I want. That's all that I want. Isn't that a profound text? It wakes us up. Now there's more that we can read in Amos, but we get the point. The people are going through all the right moves of their religion. They are observing the traditions. They are frequent worshipers at the temple. They stand firmly in their beliefs about God. But they do not practice in their daily life what they preach in their religious life. And worst of all, they have become blind to their own injustices and pretentious acts of piety. They are breaking the very heart of God. Sometimes religion can get in the way of our relationship with God and with our relationship with each other and with our relationship with ourselves. Sometimes religion can do that. And when we acknowledge such a thing, it can be a little frightening. Of all the weeks of the year that I should not preach this kind of sermon, this would be the week. Next Sunday afternoon is our annual charge conference. A whole lot of papers have to be filled out in preparation of that annual meeting. I understand the administrative need for such disclosure. I really do. There has to be a transparent honesty, a verifiable honesty between a congregation and its annual conference that we are in. United Methodism requires such a transparent honesty. But don't think for a moment that God concerns himself with such mundane matters. We have to, but don't think that God is concerned about the charge conference. He's not. 